So what we covered last week is that there are two higher stages of meditation. And that is related to our variety of experiences in when we practice meditation regularly, we find those changes. Ah, it may be the colors or the visions, it may be uh, the shape and the sizes and lot of <clears throat> other experiences. But they are two higher stages of meditation. And uh, second higher stage of meditation that we discussed last time is that there is an objectless state of the mind. That is what I just talking about. The real self in the heart and we both are conscious. And when we both are, uh, I am conscious, the reality is also the conscious. And... Uh, but I'm conscious of the word. I'm conscious of the other things in life. Drop everything for a while, for a second. Then drop all the thoughts also. Drop the ego also. And then what is left? Only pure consciousness. That is our real nature. That is the goal and object of meditation. And that is what we understood in terms of higher stages of meditation. In last couple of sessions. Now, here our master Patanjali explains one method of meditation, how it begins, from where it begins. So Patanjali has its own approach, Krishna has its own approach. So there are almost 3000 masters, they have different approaches. So that we found in the third chapter. Uh, you may not be too much concerned about the third chapter. You may be more concerned about the content of it. So the Patanjali says there are three stages. There are three stages together is known as the process and the method of meditation according to Patanjali. Don't uh, mix up with what uh, I teach or what you learn in Saturday session. That is totally different. That is a different approach. So here to it is totally different approach. So Lara has come here for her interest in the third chapter. Uh, the first four sutras gives us the clue that where Patanjali is taking us. So he says the first stage of meditation is Desabandhasya Chitasya Dharana. You know, those who have dog and the pet and plus the leash, so they can easily understand what it means by the first sutra. You put the leash on the dog. So what you are doing, the you are confining the territory of the dog, isn't it? You are confining the territory of a dog. Oh, you cannot move further. Oh, here is your territory. What happens when you do it every day? After a few weeks, dog knows. Dog knows. I cannot move further. Now replace the dog with the mind. That is our first step according to Patanjali. That is our first step. So that is what is Desa Bandhasya Chitasya Dharana. So the normal translation in English is concentration of mind. But that is not true. That is not true. The real meaning, according to Patanjali, you have to confine the mind in a particular territory. That keeps the mind relaxed and calm. But if you focus and you concentrate, say I focus on Stephen, other, other also people come into my mind, so I have to drive those people out of my mind, and again I come back to Stephen. No, object of concentration. So we are not talking of Western psychology, not at all. Oh, focus, make an effort. No, casually. Keep your mind on a particular object. 
So you can find the territory of the mind. What it means? I used to meditate on my master. So what that means? Confining the territory. Sometime I used to see his feet. Sometime I used to see his smiling face. Sometime I used to see his eyes. Uh, eyes is uh, connecting to my eyes. So that is the meaning of confining the territory of the mind. Uh, Lara, it is not concentration. Patanjali does not say it is concern. Otherwise, he should have said directly concentration. So when we keep the mind in a confine the territory of the mind, that is the first stage. The second stage, what happens? Second stage, what happens? I should give you some example by, yeah. So in the second stage, what happens, uh, that mind is absorbed into the internal nature of the object. Internal nature of the object. One master gives a very beautiful depiction of this meditation, these three stages. So let me explain to you. And uh, that will make a do you see that? The top is the ordinary thinking. A, B, C, D are different thoughts in the mind and different objects in the mind. Right? Now, the first stage of meditation where you are confining the territory of the mind on one object. Right? So now, this becomes the first stage of meditation. So you may think, you may become aware of it, you may see the image, you may see the color of that object. That is okay. So we are not talking of concentration. So that becomes the first stage of meditation according to Patanjali. What we are learning? We have learned the higher stages of meditation in the last few sessions, but now we are understanding from where this entire process comes, according to Patanjali. Now, what uh, happens in the second stage of meditation? That is beautiful. Now, see what happens in meditation, what I have depicted. This is with a full circle, and now this is dot, 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 dot. What is the meaning of the dot? So when I put a circle, this is the external nature of an object. So in meditation, we lose that external object of the object, which we say self-absorption of the mind. Oh, as if the mind is absorbed, you know, I forgot myself. You know, sometimes we say I was absorbed in the work. Don't you see, I was absorbed in the work and I forgot even to take my lunch. Do you see that? No, I'm just explaining in a very simple, easy term. So once you get to that point, that is what people and masters talk about meditation. Now, what about the uh, higher meditation? What about the higher meditation? So what happens? The external nature totally drops. Only the object remains. And now what happens? In that object, you have four stages that you have understood uh, in the last few sessions. And then the very object as such also disappears. What is left? Objectless state. So why the objectless state uh, left? Then you get what you get. The knowledge of the reality is revealed in the mind. Because the ultimate cause of anything, any object, every person in the world is only one. That is pure consciousness. 
So now if you if we study, so first stage is known as Desabandhasya Chitasya Dharana, confining the territory of the mind uh, on a particular object. You pick up any object, you pick up dog or you pick up God. So we are beyond belief, cult, dogma, etc., etc. We, the yoga does not believe in such uh, good things for other people, not for a seeker. Then the second, what it says, tatra pratikatanata dhyanam. Now he is explaining the second stage. Uninterrupted flow of the mind on an object is the second stage of meditation. And what is the third stage? Tadaivart matra nirvasam swarupa sunyam eva samadhi. So what it means? Tadaivart matra nirvasam. So when we start meditation with an object, that may be a mantra in our uh, journey, we use the mantra. So what happens? That mantra in the form of a word appear and disappear, but the very essence of that mantra remains. Means a consciousness of well-being, a consciousness of peace, a consciousness of wholeness, and a consciousness of auspiciousness remains. And once that remains, then what happens? Then the knowledge of the reality dawns. Now, all the three parts process of meditation is known as sanyam. Trayame, trayame kev, trayame katraha sanyamaha. It is known as sanyam. Another definition of meditation, according to Patanjali, is known as Sometimes you are looking at the wall, isn't it? And you are not looking at the wall at all. The mind is still totally absorbed and you feel the sense of emptiness. That is meditation, if you are aware of it. If you are aware of it, that is meditation. That is meditation. You got it? Some idea? Some reflection as we are moving step by step? So this is what we are doing in this series. So once we understand that, then we can go deeper from the first chapter that there are, Patanjali has explained about, I would say 10 to 15, uh, different ways of meditation and we will pick up one after the other from the first chapter. Sanyama, dharana. So the first step holding the mind in a confined territory is known as dharana. Uninterrupted flow of the mind is known as meditation or dhyana and <coughs> When the mind reaches, appears as if it has reached to an objectless state where the knowledge of the reality dawns, is the higher meditation. So in that higher meditation, then we have two stages. In first force, in the first higher meditation, uh, we start having these experiences which we have been discussing in the last few sessions. <coughs> so we have to continue the practice until we reach to a totally objectless state. Totally objectless state. So once we reach to that objectless state, then we wait there, and when we wait, then what happens? 
then the knowledge of the reality is dawn. So now take an example of uh, if I uh, can I address Christina? So you, we have a lot of stuff in the mind which causes anxiety, duality, conflict, problem. So what we are doing in meditation, we are saying, empty all this, empty. Throw it. Don't worry about that. Don't start thinking about it. What you should think, peace and happiness is my essential nature. The moment the anger comes, cut that anger by peace and happiness is my essential nature. How dare you mind enter into anger and anxiety? Stop this nonsense. No, you are talking to your mind. That is very important. Why? Knowledge is very important. Without knowledge, you cannot do the practice. If I know the address of Lara, then only I can reach to her house. How can I reach to her house without knowing the address? So I must have a right knowledge. Clarity. So I have a clarity. Yes, peace and happiness is my essential nature. My master used to say, always think about it. So the more and more your mind is confined into the territory that peace is my essential nature, one day the intellect will interfere to the mind. How the hell you are talking about it? Then you start the research, searching. Oh, let me find out where is the peace in me. You see that? The process is very well defined. Once we understand clearly, what we do in meditation session, oh, I have a lot of depression, so let us do the meditation, focus on the breath without understanding, without knowledge. So no doubt you feel very good, you feel relaxed in any meditation given by any teacher. But what happens once the practice is done? your mind returns to the same old thought. The mind knows that, no, I have an anxiety. I am suffering. The mind doesn't leave that. That is why we need a knowledge. Are you getting it? That is why, that is why I speak a lot and I tell you, keep quiet. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's, huh? it, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. It's a journey. So you wake up in the morning and mind says, what happened? Heaviness. How dare you mind? Say this. Man, happiness is my essential nature. Let me sit and find out. Thought associated with the feeling. Let me drop it. Peace is my essential nature. And you will find when you achieve a fair degree of success in meditation, these thoughts associated with the feeling goes away. You cannot prove through an experimental protocol in scientific research what exactly is happening. You can find out some physiological changes, biochemical changes, but this is what we are talking of subjective reality. We are not talking of objective reality. Anything that is objective, the science will experiment will definitely work. But for subjective reality, the science has not created any protocol of research. That is what needs to be understood clearly. And once you understand, then the changes comes in your life. The life becomes beautiful. I don't know, I spoke a lot, whether I believe you have understood. So <laughs> let us start our practice of meditation. So when you listen to it again and again,